Get down, you boy. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? Something very precious. I'll give you a clue what's in the bag. The dogs already know what's in the bag without even looking in the bag. That's a big clue. You know yet? Exciting, isn't it, Pace? What's in the bag? Hey? Very exciting, what's in the bag? Bruno knows what's in the bag, don't you, boy? Yeah, sure do. So, anybody figured out what's in the bag yet? I'm sort of taking my time here to give you a chance. Anybody thought thought through what it would be? I'll give you a clue. In here, it's a resource, but it's also an absolute menace. And my dogs love it. You must know by now. So, what's in the bag is something this guy here, who's doing garden, got up at 3 a.m. this morning, and I'm so proud of him. He got up at 3 a.m. and he didn't get to bed till what, midnight last night? I think I was chatting to you, wasn't I? Yeah. Yeah, so he's only had three and a half hours sleep, got himself out of bed, got himself out into the bush, and emptied his traps. So now you know what it is. It's possum. Plucked possum? Yep. Yes, plucked. Let's have a look at what he's got for the dogs. He advises me the face is a bit smashed. You only need to give the head of a possum a smack once if you do it properly. Got to be careful here because dogs can fight over a bit of meat. We've got Bruno hanging around. Oh yes, not looking pretty. We better not show that. Uh, the smaller one. And this one here, that'll be, that'll be a meal there for Bruno. That one just by itself. We'll just take the claws off. Yeah, Bruno. Bruno, still warm. It's only killed him this morning. Come on, boy. Eat up. That's a good dog. Not for you, mate. The head will go first, and that's probably the best part for him. Very high in omega-3, got all the good oils and stuff. You hear those big jaws just breaking right through that, that skull, crushing it. Massive jaw. His bite ratio is 503 pounds per square inch. We measured it a few years ago. Stefan from Germany had a tool that could do that. Both front legs gone now. I've got a couple of ducklings that sound like they've already hatched. I can hear peeping going on there. I haven't opened it yet. I opened it yesterday and they were cracking. Over here, I've researched this, this is too close. I read that for goslings and ducklings, they don't take heat well. This is 100 watt, it needs to be 20 inches above, and currently it's about, well, I suppose, half that or even closer, so I need to raise it. I've reshifted it and clamped it, and I've got it at 50 now. I'd rather my ducklings get too cold than, than heat up too much. I can feel the heat just, it's actually perfect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of chick starter at this end here, water at that end. I don't know how much they can eat, but I want it to be there for them for the first time they try to eat something that's edible. Maybe I'll I'll be like mama duck and just go peck, peck, peck. I don't think ducks are very good mothers really. The last ducklings I put in with my duck, she was clucky, but she squashed them. She wasn't that careful. I think chickens make better mothers. Right, moment of truth. First things we're going to do is we're going to turn this machine off. Then we're going to take the squeaky top off. Let's see what's going on in here. Hopefully I've got something that's hatched out the eggs. Oh, is that duckling dead? Shit, it looks like a duckling that's not moving. It's got out. Oh no. Oh no, sleep. Or is this one a dead here? That's not good. This guy's alive, but this guy looks dead. Ah, oh, that's disappointing. That shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen at all. It's hatched out, and it's dead. That is disappointing. Why is that happening? It made it, but it died in there. And it said on the machine that you leave them in until they're all out. This guy's actually died in here. Ah, gutted. All right, mate, you survived. Well done. Well done. You're by yourself, buddy. You're in your new house. You haven't got a mate to keep you warm, which would have been a lot better. Yep. Oh, I'm gutted that this guy got lost. Absolutely gutted. What happened, mate? What went wrong? 
He got out of the egg. This one here is peeping. Oh, here we go. Should have been out like two days ago. It's cracked. Let's just give it a wee bit of a help. Because you're going to need a buddy to, to buddy up with tonight. You're in good shape, aren't you, mate, eh? Yeah, you're a strong duckling. Why can't they all be like you? What's the secret, eh? Is it genetics or is it just luck? You're a fit ass. You're a strong little duckling. Here's a beak, eh, hey, mate? You're struggling to get out of your egg, are you? We're going to give you some help. Yes, we are. Last time I did this, it lived. All I've got to be careful of is not to break that membrane. Well, it's day two, and Tuffy, that's his name because he's a survivor, survived. Oh, geez, mate, calm down. Look at him, he wants to be with me. He's under the heat lamp. I've put him into my new bedroom because it's warm in here, it's insulated, and he's just 100 mile an hour. He's going well. I'll switch her off. See what's going on. I can hear peeping, that's a good sign. Whoa! Whoa! We've got one right out of the shell. Get on, mate, you're over there. Get a bit squashed there. And this guy's not too far from coming out either. I'm gonna put you with the other duck. Get on, mate. Jeez. You made it, eh? I'm a bit worried about that bum shaking. You take a dump on my new carpet, I'll be very unhappy. This guy's the healthiest little duck you ever saw. He's only a day old. He's so healthy, aren't you, eh? You think I'm your mum? Yes. Hard case, man. They're just something else. Fluffy ducks. Something else. Gonna go to sleep? We can come see Dad. Yeah? That's it, mate. Who likes eating duck? Oh, I love it. I don't think I can eat this one, though. It's too cute. Well, we got through the night. It's day two. This one close to the camera. That's Tuffy. Yeah, and that's his mate. The other one didn't make it. Had to knock it on the head. It was deformed. Something was wrong with it. But Tuffy's really doing well. Aren't you, mate? Got this bit of grass strip here which has not been used, it actually doesn't belong to me, it belongs to my old landlord. But what I'm gonna do is gonna put these electric fence posts in with the help of young Spencer and graze a couple of sheep in here and use that strip up. So on the corners what I do is I put one of these in and just jam it in like that. That way that can take the strain being pulled back this way here. Two different types of electric fence, this one here which is good, but I like this one better because of the wide ribbon and the sheep sort of go off what they see. They know what it does, they know it means electric shock, so they keep away from it. You can see the boundary post here, so that's, uh, that's Murray's land on that side. I'm gonna set my fence up here, start it here with a negative and positive in this corner. So basically we're gonna create a circuit that's gonna go all the way up there and back. You think you're helping, mate, do you? Hey, you think you're helping? What are you doing, Bigsy? You leave my chickens alone, mate. Hey, Pace? You're not chasing chickens, I hope. Hey? Eh? Hey? Eh? No, I wasn't doing anything, mate. I was just behaving myself, being a good doggy. So he's here for work experience and he's sitting down his ass. And I know why you're tired. You say you're not tired, but you are, because you're sitting down your ass while I'm running these lines out. Why don't you just admit it, you're tired. You've been up, you've only had three hours of sleep last night, aren't you? You're tired, aren't you? No. So why are you sitting on your bum? <laughs> There's plenty to do, mate. We're putting up a fence. You're sitting there watching me. Come on, pull your finger out of your bum. If you want to go for a rabbit shoot today, mate, there's work to be done. Right, there's a chicken on the loose, so I want you to put these dogs in a box together, the two of them. There's one box here you can go, and then you can chase a chicken. The reason you put them in a box is because, why? So they don't learn to chase chickens. Awesome, mate, you're onto it, 100%. Good luck. Somewhere in here, one of our lane hens has got to wait. Oh, there she goes, under there. Right, Spencer's mission is to catch that and get it back on the side of the fence. 
Okay, hunting skills. Go on stealth and catch that, that chicken. She's over there. They're pretty easy to catch. They'll just squat down if you don't threaten them too much. She's having a good old scratch around in there. Go, make some chicken noises, mate. <laughs> like that. Be calm. And your movement's going to be calm in that. Look. Oh, she's on to us. She's on to us. She's like, no, fuck this. I've got freedom. Don't forget to make your chicken noises. I'll be this side here. Spencer's going to cut her off. Let's come back towards me. She's probably going to go down in this horrible thick shit here. That's how you do it, grasshopper. You must be swift to catch the chicken. G'day, mate. You still got that apple on your beak? I'll tell you what, we'll take that apple. You can have it in your pen. How's that sound? Back in your old house. So the chicken started coming back in here of their own accord. I was going to use it to grow vegetables, but they decide they want to start laying in here, so I put an extra laying box in down here and get the eggs. And they've come back in the old house to roost at night, and guess what? They're laying all their eggs in here. So, mate, you're back in here now. There you go. Okay. And there's your apple. Happy as. Hey, thanks for all your comments about what to plant in here. And I was going to plant stuff in there, but chickens now have come back through under the fence, and it's actually easier for us. Just the house is just up here. Go to the house pick the eggs from here, they come up, there's no food in there, they still just roost in there at night, lay their eggs in there, then they go out in the paddock and feed, so it's worked out quite good actually, so it won't be planting. Spencer's done this whole garden this morning, he's weeded it, watered it, and the other gardens too. And now we're putting up this electric fence for sheep. Right, we have our system set up, we'll get our earth, make connector up, and we want to hear a ticking sound. Put your terminal on bud, this one here, that'll give us a, can you hear a tick going on in here? Should be a tick going on there somewhere. Yep. She's all good? You are going to get some fresh grass because this is pretty much dry. Come on, mate. can be a lot of fun and games if this guy decides to run because you can't really hold it that well. You going to come down here? Oh, great. Oh, jeez, that was, that was a trap. Just about got KO'd. Piece of fucking wood bounced back and spit smack me in the head. I might want to bring you up this end here. We're good. That's good. We're good. They're on the paddock. Yeah, run that out and we'll be sweet as, bro. Been farting around with bits of bloody grass and stuff, but Murray's come over and he's got a tool to measure it so we can know exactly what's going through the fence. That'll be interesting because I don't think it's that much. We get a good earth. Okay. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely nothing there at the moment. Nothing, nothing, nothing going through. Nothing going through. Oh shit, we've got it set up wrong then. Well, don't tell the sheep. <laughs> This is ticking like it should be now. My old landlord Murray helped me set this up because he's a good bastard. There's the earth. And that goes right down to there with a the nail on the ground. And then the red one, the red one up there, that just runs off the other end. So it's wide into that and goes through here. And we're getting about four now off the fence. Spencer's just asking me if these are ducklings or chickens. So I guess you've never seen a duckling before, no, mate? No, not like yellow ones. Here's some feed, mate. These are great, these cost lettuce, man. They just produce so much. This would be my favourite vegetable to grow. It just produces and produces, and we keep on taking leaves off all the time. And the other thing is that the sparrows don't smash it like they do with all the other stuff. But they've nailed out of the plants. The occasional one that's a bit tired here. No, they're all pretty bloody good. Good tucker. How many eggs do you want for lunch today, mate? Come on, how many do you want? Okay, I'm gonna cook you some eggs. I'm gonna ask you again, how many eggs do you want? It's not a not a difficult question. How hungry are you? Hungry-ish. Okay, so what would be, the, we've got no limit on the eggs you can eat. You can have whatever you want, mate. How many do you want? I'm not gonna answer this for you. you know, you're 14, you can take responsibility for the simple question. How many eggs do you want? Use that brain of yours. Come on, you're a clever man. Four eggs. Making a nice salad. Dried tomatoes, cheese. We've got some egg cooking under all that and broccoli. Right, that's hot. Put that on our salad. 
broccoli out of the garden. And now we've got green eggs. Nice eggs. Man, this is a egg salad with a lot of eggs in it, bud. We're gonna eat these. Then we're gonna walk the dogs. Good tucker. Mm -hmm. Subsonics. Right, young fella, just uh, show me that safe, that firearm. Take your bolt out, buddy. Take it right out, mate. So you can pull the trigger and slide that back. Well, not showed you. Get your thumb out of the way. Take it right out, mate. Okay, just check your action. Look right down the end. Can you see light at the other end? Yeah. It's clear. Okay, pop your bolt back in. Lift it up, mate. You need to lift it up a little bit there. There you go. That's the bolt and just half bolt. Go down to half. Down. Push it down there. Just there. That's good. Right, I've got bullets and mag. Pick up your these things here. I'll take this for you. I want to see that rifle. I want to see that rifle stay in a safe direction the whole time we're doing this. Not like last week, where it wasn't in a safe direction for a moment. It only takes one moment. I talked to a bloke last week that got his hip blown out. Did you see that? In the, oh, you haven't seen that video yet, have you? Nah. Just because his mate wasn't safe all the time. 22 can kill you just as easy as a, a 308. If at any time it's pointing in an unsafe direction, we'll just stop straight away and uh, she'll be all over. You okay with that? Okay. We've got the luxury of this hill here. So we can go down the hill 50 metres that we can shoot. So we've got this bank beside us and we know there's nobody behind that. See there's a big hill here? So we're actually shooting into the ground. Are you wincing there before you even pull the trigger? That ain't gonna work. What do you mean wincing? Your eyes just closing momentarily. You mustn't blink when you pull the trigger. You've got to maintain visuals on the target right through the shot so you follow through after you've shot it. Okay, let's take your time. I'm trying to find it. You find, find it's like I'm trying to move it just to the side a little bit. Yeah, well you want to be steady and squeeze that off, mate. Finger back on the trigger. You're on the target, so get your finger on the trigger. If it's an animal, you wouldn't have this sort of time. Okay, reload. I definitely hit this circle that time. Good man. Just jammed up again, is she? Yeah, we're going to have to replace this here. We're going to have to replace that there. Okay, you're loaded now. She's loaded. Finger away from the trigger until you're on the target. You're good. You're still blinking that eye when you pull the trigger. I want you to try to keep your eye open. Mate, your bolt's still up. You're not loaded. You want to get your... <laughs> there you go. Come right down. Okay. Practice keeping your eye on the crosshairs without blinking and squeezing very gently. Very gently. Just slowly pulling it, keeping it on the crosshairs all the time. So any light caliber, there's nothing to worry about. You don't have to flinch. That was good. That was good. We're just going to see how that looks. We're just looking over here at a rabbit. I don't think it is, mate. It's a long way off. It's about 300 meters, that. It looks like some, though. How do you feel your last three shots went? Do you reckon you've got it in the bullseye? I reckon you might be couple in the black. Couple in the black? It's just on that upside. Well, you need three in that kill shot to go and shoot a rabbit, mate. It's as simple as that. If you haven't got it, we'll keep on practicing, okay? You got another one on the white, bro? Yep. That's even better. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good shot. Got one. That's a good shot. And then two. Oh, and these ones are outside. It's Was that one, those two there, was it? Yeah. You got to practice more, son. Was this the one did before, was it? Yeah. Mm. So you got that one there. So you can shoot it. Okay, so you want to shoot. He's got his head down there. He's the shot there. I hit him. It's back out in the middle of the paddock, mate. It'll be somewhere in there. If you think you've mortally wounded, it'll be there and B will find it. Call B so he's with you. Here he comes. Is it up over here? Yeah, mate. There it goes, there it goes. Well, it's not that wounded, he could run away. That was it. I think you only brushed it, buddy. Oh. 
You only nicked it, mate. It's running perfectly healthy to me. Always dodge you going under the electric fence, particularly the bull fence. Well, I don't really recommend using your pig dogs or a retrieving dog, but B's actually pretty much an all-rounder for that sort of thing, and normally he's good. He found the rabbit, but it was very much alive. Can you guys slow the video down? Slow the video down. Slow the, he wants you to slow the video down so you can say actually it was a kill shot. Day four, and these guys are now on this. Just hanging out, bit of mesh over the top, got their feed, bit of water splash around in. Here's their dry nesting area, although they want to spend all day in the bloody water because they're ducks. Very tiny little ducks, but they love it. Got a bit of feed here. They might want to feed. Remember that? There you go, jammed it. Tastes nice, but it's been the water, doesn't it? You want some too? You look like you got shit on your head, mate. His old mate bloody been a bit hard on you. See what's going on here? You're a bit messy, eh? Eh? A bit messy. No. We're going to clean that off. I'm your mum. You trust me, don't you? Still looks like shit. Okay, can't do much about that. Shit. Oh. I had one job to do, but I fucked it up. So was it here still? Oh, I can't remember. But how many of you guys have done this for your mum at home? My wife. My wife, yeah. Bit of glass cleaner. Couple of fingers on top, pressure. Pressure when you're pushing towards, to relax when you come back. And counting your strokes, as you go up the blade. And the beauty of this setup here is, that when you get to the tip, you're on the same angle the whole way. This is traditionally the hardest part of the knife to sharpen. And how easy is that? Flip her over. Make sure you got plenty of this because you want to keep the stuff nice and clear of loose particles. Starting on the tip of the knife. We're just getting that burr over. Right, we're going to go put with the 500, then you go 1000, then the 1500 and test it. Now we've done that, we're going to have a crack at it with the old strop. When you strop your knife, it's the same as doing anything. You want to keep the angle of this the same, don't tilt it, and when you get to the end of the stroke, keep it flat. Don't lift it, otherwise you get a burr. So how are we looking after coming off the strop? This is the best system that I've found for getting a knife sharp. The rotating type setup, or set as they're also known as, combined with a strop. I do use the whetstones. I've been using these Japanese whetstones, the Sharpton ones, for a long time. It's a 220. It goes right up to 4,000 I've got. But I find that the set is easier. We can't do much better than that. It's sharp, real sharp. Ah, well, I want you to meet another builder that follows you on the channel. Ah, right. This is Harlem. Harlem. This is Ab. There you go, mate. And... Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> He's too hoy. <laughs> and his wife, Henny Wai. Yeah, my wife. Hey, kids. Kaden, Maura, Jax, and your name's say Clay. If I better look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit gobsmacked that Harlem here, he's come to see us and he's named his child after me, Clay. Clay's actually only my nickname, you know that. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that, it, that, is that, that, it is what it is. <laughs> and I'm so uh, blessed to have this this baby named after me. I really am honoured, mate. It's pretty pretty humbling, actually. Hey, you're welcome, man. Yeah. We got really got into your channel. and Oh, that's so, so awesome. Well, uh, hopefully we have a bit of hunting for you this season because we're just about to rock into it now. Yeah, and you're a builder. Yep, yeah, I'm a builder. Unfortunately, <laughs> blessed with the tools of destruction, eh? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a good job, eh? Yeah. So he watches you, Arb, and uh, he critiques everything you do. Yeah, that's all right. Honestly, bro, what do you reckon about Arb's building skills? Um, I think it's about to be desired, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're really good, man. Yeah. <laughs> Remind me of my um, well, grandfather, actually. Right. Yeah, very particular and probably similar age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old are you, Harlem? Uh, 23. 23. Yeah. He's building down the West Coast. He's come down doing a job, oh, been yeah. working. He's got his whole family with him. How cool is that, man? Yeah. Hey, Harlem, are you still living in that small place you're telling me about now? Yeah, very tiny house, man. There's, um, everybody laughs, but there's, how many of us? Six. Six, living in a space as big as the house truck. Yeah, six metres by 2.8. All oh, right, but at the minute we've got uh, that and we're building containers around in the U. Oh yeah, with a hundred, roughly about a hundred square meter deck. In yeah, between. so it's been a really nice, uh, slow process. Are you growing any own vegetables or? Are you yeah, well, we've, we've watched a lot of you, Clay, to be honest. So Harlem rocked up to my place today with three rolls of posse yum, 
and a very nice victory knife so that's a pack of venison and some panties for him to take home for his family Let's see that's our ajax i reckon you're an awesome dad and an awesome mum your kids are a reflection on how you guys are they're just beautiful kids <laughs> and it's so so awesome to, to meet clay <laughs> really hey bro take this hey what a useless hunt i am got room for it it's frozen it'll last you get home Ooh, we'll kick in the head <laughs> hey thanks very much clay hey man you too bloody legend yeah. man we told we told clay before we come he was the um the local legend so you like meeting the local legend i think you guys are the legends actually come hey on. have a good trip home okay good trip Good to meet you. Clay's already asleep in his seat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to meet you. you too. Thanks for making the time. Appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. Course, Safe man. travels, guys. Right, yeah. Yep. Nice. And thanks for the posse um, and the knife. <laughs> it's a stick knife. This is what they bought me. These are really good knives, bud. This one's either, I think this could be actually high carbon steel, this one. Often the embossed handles is. Do you know if it is or not? Not sure, Clay. I just yeah. had, to, had to bring you something, mate. Oh, mate, you didn't have to. And thanks to the posse, um, that'll, that'll go really well. Yeah, hey, good to see you. Come here. All the best, mate. Drive safe. Stay out of trouble. Thanks, mate. See you later, bro. Ciao, mate. Ciao. Awesome people. Awesome, awesome people. One of my patrons, who I won't forget, that was a really cool visit. And this morning we've got, working for us, this fella over here, young Spencer. And we're going to be taking him for a pig hunt later on today, so he's pretty excited, aren't you, mate? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I know you are. Your seedlings, mate, are doing really well. Did you have a look at those? Yeah, they're doing real well, eh? Oh, yeah, mate, you've just done a bloody brilliant job. Well done. Yeah. You'll be growing all your own tucker soon as well, eh? Yeah, I reckon. Well, you're making your own food now. Yeah. Did you make your meal last night? Yep. What'd you have? I got some chicken wings. Yep. I cooked up a whole lot of them and had a salad with it. You make a salad yourself? Yep. So what was in your salad? Uh, it was spinach, lettuce, tomato and avocado. You're becoming a machine, aren't you? You can see you've lost the weight and you're getting stronger. Good tucker. Doing well, mate. You're going to become next level generation the way you're going. This is Spencer's fourth day in the last week. I had him two days last week and two days this week. And today I'm teaching him about creating good video content for his channel. I'm helping get his channel up and running. We're starting to get it moving again. Later on today, we're going for a pig hunt. His channel is called Filthy Pig Hunter. So it's good that we're actually going to be doing some pig hunting on your channel. What I'm showing you today is how to edit and how to get rid of all the stuff that people don't want to hear about. That's all the ums, the ahs, the you knows, the yeah. It's just filler stuff, nobody wants to hear it. But I'm also showing them how to download, go from iPhone to Android, or PC at least, how that works. I'm going to put it in Adobe Premiere, and I'm also going to show you how to shortcut getting files in there and editing them faster. This is really invaluable stuff. Making a YouTube channel is difficult, it's hard, it's a hard environment today to be in. It needs to be done with a lot of thought and you need to have accurate, quick information that goes straight to the point which hasn't got a lot of filler stuff like the ums and the ahs and all the stuff in between. And yes, you can hear baby ducks tweeting right down here because while we're doing that, these guys here can hear my voice and they think that I'm mum, don't you? They're under the heat lamp there. Right, we'll kick into it. Here's a scene where Spencer's got a possum. He's going to get across the river. Now. The river. About to go check the traps. Go see his yeah, trap. There's a possum there. G'day. Little possum down there saying, hello little fella, He's, I like this part, you're talking. G'day mate. G'day mate, that's good. G'day mate, just want to say a little, little thank you and um, yeah, fuck you. Okay, so then you're saying fuck you and with a hammer. Now, us hunters, we always respect the animal we kill, even if it's a possum, a mouse, anything. Because we understand that we're taking your life. So by you saying fuck you and putting it on your channel, Straight away you've alienated yourself and probably 80% of people that have conscience about life and respecting it. Mm. You have to learn to also respect the animal you kill. Now you've probably hung out with someone else who's also shot an animal and just left it there or wasted something and, and shown disrespect. But if you want to be a hunter, 
You've got to bring this ethics into your hunting. Yeah. You might have to learn it. You'll learn it from me because I'll pull you up on it. I don't care what you're killing, you, you show it respect, you kill it humanely, and then you utilise every part of it. You've taken its life so you don't waste that life. It woke up in the morning just like you, that possum, felt the sun, it's back in the morning, went to a stream, got its drink, it's drunk milk from its mother, just like you drank milk from your mother when you were a baby, all those things. And the fact that it's a possum doesn't mean that you say fuck you and, and smash it with a hammer. Yes, you smash it with a hammer, you give it one clean hit to the head, and if you want to stick it to bleed it out, great. But show a little bit of respect. If you portray yourself on your channel as being disrespectful to the game you're hunting, your channel's going to get hated upon. I want you to have a success with this channel. Yep. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, that goes with anything you're killing. It's a goat, a rabbit. Show the animal respect. Right, we'll carry on and we're going to edit that fuck you out of it so people will just see that and then see it dead and you'll be squared as right. Okay, what have you learnt? Tell me. Oh, don't put the F word in it. I get told off a lot for swearing, but the thing about swearing is intent. It's how you're using it. If you're going, fuck your useless clay, I'm talking about myself, I can do that. Well, it's a fucking beautiful looking pig. But if you're swearing at somebody else, then you're running them down, or it's an aggressive. People won't like that, mm -hmm. so you don't want that. We'll look further down your video, but I can see you've got one there. What else have you do? Uh, yeah, don't. Oh, I respect the animals and stuff. Yeah, show respect. Also, the uh, yeah, yeah, nums. The, there's no place for them in your video. They're filler, and you're wasting someone else's time listening to you go, uh, yeah, um. All the time. You don't want to listen to it, so they don't either. Right, let's look at this next bit where he's swearing in this to see if we can keep it in. I'm not against swearing. It's about intention. Were your intentions good? Were they funny? If it's good or it's funny or it's humorous, then keep it in. If people have a problem with this actual swear, well, that's their problem, not yours. But if it's something that you're being either rude or disrespectful or putting someone down there, it shouldn't be in the video. Yeah. And you shouldn't be doing it in real life either, as a rule. Let's have a look at this. Get going, mate. Don't fucking stop. Not fucking smoke, go. Okay, let's talk about that. So you're with a bloke who's... Is he the guy that drove you out there? Yeah. He's the guy that got up at 3.30 in the morning and picked you up and took you out there? Yeah. And now you're saying, don't fucking stop, not fucking smoke, go. So he's older than you and he's taking time to help you out and you're trying to be funny, aren't you? Yeah, I told him to stop. You told him to stop? Yeah. So I have to actually get some footage, but yeah. Oh, so you told him to stop, and then you filmed it and you set it up. What you've done is you've kind of put him down to put yourself up. I understand why you're doing this. It's to kind of make yourself feel better like the big man, but people will look at that and they'll just see you as being disrespectful. You'd never ever see Smash say something like that to anybody. To be... To, to get respect from people, you've got to give respect. You want to be respected. So start earning it by respecting people. We're going to cut that out of the video because it won't do your video any favours, okay? Yep. I know you're trying to be funny and that's great. You're trying to create something and I, I take my hat off to you for that, but don't do it in a disrespectful way. Yep. If you're going to take the piss out of somebody, take the piss out of Spencer. All right? Got it? Yep. Yeah. Good man. Definitely hasn't got a muffler, has it? Where's your muffler? Right there. The on the boat in the back. In the car. Oh, on the car, it's sitting in there, right. Well, it's actually supposed to be running underneath the car <laughs> and doing shit. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, you too. How's your adventure been? Oh, it's good. It's good. You've been on the road with my son and Taylor? Yeah. Did you lose Taylor or is she still with you? Oh, she's going back to Christchurch now. She's going back to Christchurch. Yeah. You guys might know Taylor, you would have seen her in our, our video. The or, Did you have fun? The Irish pub video. Did you have fun? Mm hmm. Have you had any sleep? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what do you reckon? It's a Ford, Arb. Uh, it's got his muffler sitting in the... It's got the right stripes on it, too, like they had. You know, yep. the black, mm -hmm. wide one with the two thin ones. Mufflers in the back don't need that. No, mufflers yeah. inside the car. They yeah, carry yeah. it around. They don't, don't need, need it. That. <laughs> Sounds like it's got a lumpy cam and everything on it now. <laughs> oh, it does have a lumpy cam. Oh, well, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. It's got a number two ball for his, his gear stick. My son has returned in style. <laughs> it's actually an awesome car, bro. Thanks. Yeah. Well, son, welcome home. Make yourself coffee if you want.
Good to see you. Good. I wasn't sure if you're coming home today. Did you tell me you're coming home today? Um, I think so. Did you? Oh, I don't remember, but anyway, it's okay. It's good to see you. But I'll be leaving again either this evening or tomorrow morning. Oh, you're leaving again tonight, okay. Yeah, we're going to the West Coast. Oh, you're going to the West Coast? Oh, the adventure carries on. <laughs> what a great life he has, eh? So you heading down the West Coast tonight, maybe? Yeah, with Zeb and Gabe to do some kayaking. Cool. Yeah. Oh, get yourself a feed if you want some. Plenty of eggs here, plenty of veggies in the garden. And, uh, I'm just going to carry on with Spencer. I'm taking him pig hunting tonight. Oh, cool. Yep, so he's been doing work with me today. So where did your adventure take you to after you left the Blenheim pub? He, he left his dad, he was supposed to come back and work on the farm, but he left his dad to go and run away with the wild woman that he met. Are you still friends of her or is that just a moment in your life that's passed? Uh, still friends. Oh, still friends. I was actually going away with Blake originally. I know that, I know that he, he got hurt. When he, with I, heard, I heard that he got hurt that I said that my son was going on the road with a woman. It was actually Blake. Yep. Such a sensitive soul. <laughs> Sorry, Blake. Do you want a hug? No, it's fine. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you give him hugs? He gives me hugs all the time. Okay, do you give him hugs back? Sometimes. Okay. You don't look like you're really comfortable with hugs, Blake. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, mate. We're not Italian. We're Kiwis. We don't hug. Oh, yeah, look at that. Are you single? Yep. Cop that, ladies. He's single. Oh, right, yeah. you have a good one, son. I'll let you carry on. Good to see you, too. I'm glad you made it home alive. your mate yes how long have you been driving on the road like that with that um from only from you know the bit of motorway between richmond and tahuna oh okay yeah oh it's not too bad no nah, did everybody watch though hey i bet everybody looked at you <laughs> how did it drop off i uh, don't know we were just driving along the highway yeah. like going 100 k's and then suddenly shit mm. you pulled over and you listen to it Just getting down my driveway. <laughs> when you arrive, we didn't know what to expect. <laughs> we thought a war had begun. <laughs> We've entered the hunt zone, cruising along. The temperature has dropped down to about 17 degrees. So you don't want to hunt your dogs. Anything, anything under 16 is okay, but you certainly want to go above that. It's been quite a hot day, but the temperature will drop as the evening goes on. There is a good pig up here. Just a question of whether we can pick up the scent. I'm going to keep Poe on the back of the truck for now. Simon's got his dog on the front. There she goes, just winding. And she's only interested in one thing, that dog, boars. Classic country for pigs. She's just lightly winding. She's just trying to get where it might be. Well, that's Spencer's little pig he got tonight. Just blooding it on the stairs. That's his hut where he's staying in up there, the tree hut. That's his house where he's currently staying with me. And it's the first time he's blooded his knife this year and his new knife that one of you guys gave. I'll sit down, it'll be probably a day or two's work that edit for that hunt and I'll bring it to you. We also got onto a good boar on that, of which, well you have to wait to see whether we caught it or not in the video, but that's a nice little fat eating pig. Not a biggie, but it's a piggy. Oh yeah, we'll see if we get this motor to go first. We've got a lot of wind on the surface and the visibility is pretty poor so it's going to be pretty much a challenge to try and get a flounder. We're going to head on to the other side and see how we go. But I won't get too excited about this mission because that's a very, very bad condition for seeing. Awesome buddy, right through the head. That's a good yellow eyed mullet, good size one. Don't lose it when you pull it off. It's just stick that in the bin. Good going mate. Well done, you nailed it. And you spotted a flounder. So we've been out here for about three hours and... Put the latch. Finally, yeah, pull it up, mate. Finally, Spencer spotted a flounder, but he just like hit that beautifully, that yellow eye, mate, right through the head. You can have that for breakfast tomorrow, mate. Good, good going. Awesome. Well done. You nailed it, mate. Hey, put it there, brother. Smashed it. That was actually a good shot. <laughs> Currently young Spencer's up the hill right now with Jody and Patrick. I sent him off, gave him a GoPro. If he gets a pig or they shoot a deer, I'll bring it to you soon.
Be good, you can't be good, be careful, and we'll see you all in the next video. I'm just chilling with my man here on the floor. Boom, no! Down the river stream. Down the river stream. Down the river stream. Dog and boy so mean. When the river run red. When the old boys did. Old dog, old dog. Old dog, old dog. Old boy, old boy. Old dog, old dog.